Turn it up, let it start. From block to block, we snatching hearts and jacking marks. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. What up, what up? It's Friday. We got no job. Not sure how many of y'all got jobs or careers or something. Some way to make some money. Anyway, good morning. It is September 21st, 2018. About 7.33 a.m. Arizona time. Doing our thing already today. Heading off to work. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going. Heading off to work. Doing, doing the damn thing. Um... Not I'll talk about this morning, but I didn't do, I didn't talk about the McGregor, uh, Khabib presser yesterday. Seems like everyone else did, like people were pretty much tweeting out, like almost like I do, or like everybody, pretty much everybody now does. After a pay-per-view, they were like, going live and, you know, in, the, in literally a minute on YouTube to talk about McGregor, Khabib press conference. And it's like, alright, cool. And, I, and look, those shows get a lot of views, because people like, are so hyped about stuff that they just, you know, they just they want to talk about it, hear about it. Put their own opinion out there on the on the comments and shit. And by the way, if you do a live show, a post fight show, a post press conference show, any live shows, pay attention to the fucking comments. I know some of those comment like people commenting are dicks. Okay, but if it's a live show, it's about interaction. I mean, if it's a pre recorded show, don't worry about it. But if it's a live show, you gotta interact with people. What the fuck's wrong with y'all? Let me turn off comments like Hawani. Oh, my feelings get hurt, so I turn off the comments. Like, nah, fuck you, dude. Don't be a bitch. Anyway. So yesterday, it could be Connor, UFC 229 press conference. I thought they were going to have more, like, a bunch of fighters there. Just had those two idiots on there. Just up there on a the table, just with microphones. And yapping, talking shit to each other. It wasn't even that Khabib was talking any shit. Khabib was about as calm as you've always seen him. Just ice cold motherfucker. Like... That dude should freak, probably freaks a lot of people out, right? But McGregor was going off on some angry shit. Like he was angry immediately, and but but he had like you know the usual pre, like pre-written, like bullet points, right? Which he's good at. Which is good. Good. You should be prepared for you know a shit talk fest and all that. Talking about the bus and why don't you get out the bus? And, you were in there shitting yourself, and look at my whiskey. By the way, like he did a great job of plugging, uh, what was it called, Proper 12? And uh, plugging Proper 12, and fucking, uh, he did like three commercials for it during the press conference. Um, so much, I almost want to try it. You know what I mean? And it's funny, McGregor does his research, he knows his shit. He poured a fucking glass out for, uh, for, uh, uh, for Khabib, because he's like, I don't drink. He's like, what do you mean you don't drink? Like, dude, he, he doesn't drink, so. But, uh, he knew that. Don't play like he didn't know that. So him and Dana White had a glass of, each one had a little cup with proper 12, doing his thing and shit. But, uh, you gotta respect this hustle, man. That dude, that dude hustles like a motherfucker. Anyway, went off on that. Here's the weird thing about McGregor. It, he, like, the, first of all, there was no crowd. There were no fans at the press conference. So, there was no real reaction to anything he was saying, right? So that, all this is a press conference. He says something, and the crowd goes nuts. They laugh. They yell shit. They start chanting. That all that shit, and uh, and it's great, entertaining as fuck when there's a crowd. There was no crowd. I thought it came out flat. He almost seemed like a fucking like he was trying too hard. You know what I mean? He he made a good point though. He's like, "Where are the fucking fans? What's the point?" Like. Why are we doing this shit? And, um... I'm with him, 100%. Should have had the whole place full of fans. What's the point of having a McGregor press conference if there aren't any fans to... to enjoy it? Like, in the building. Like, you need that environment. You know, all the reporters were kind of like, yeah, okay, cool. Like, they're not really... Like, they're allowed to react, but not allowed to start chanting and screaming and shit. There were a couple idiots that got in the crowd. Like, there was one... There was one Irish dude, you know, whatever, who gives a shit. And, um... But there was another guy that was pr- pr- credential press. I'm assuming some little chubby fat fuck from some like New York radio station, a sports station or something, showed up in a fucking, he had a Zufa shirt with an open button, you know, it was button up shirt, but it was open and a hat. It looked like a fucking slob. How the fuck do you get in that shit? Looking like a slob. All right, and he's up there trying to try be all tough as like at, uh, at Khabib and, and Connor. Mostly Khabib, he was like sucking Connor's dick. 
but he was like trying to be tough at, at, Con, at, at Khabib and I'm sitting there going like shut the fuck up you slob you're representing every MMA media like outlet you need to cut that shit out but you know I don't control who the credentials though I know I know I, I know a few guys that get credentials so those guys always show up proper but that dude was just a fucking fat New York slob fuck that guy I don't give a shit I'm not even talking shit about New York that guy's a slob from New York so sorry New York you got a fucking fat slob that was representing you guys there on camera and shit anyway but uh so overall I mean there was a lot of things back and forth Connor talking about Khabib's um, affiliations with certain very uh, dark figures, should I say, in Russia, um, and then he resorted to a lot of like, 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 uh, like mocking sounds. Like he resorted to a lot of that shit. It didn't make any sense. You know, it was very not that it made any sense. Just it, it didn't make any sense for McGregor. McGregor is like usually very sharp, very witty, very quick with it. And he was just like, meh, 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 meh. He did that multiple times. Like, Khabib would say something, and Conor would be like, meh, meh, meh. I think he was upset, maybe a little upset that Khabib wasn't, like, biting and coming back with shit talk of his own. Because he wasn't. Khabib didn't say any shit. He was just, he was saying, you know, he was, like, explaining things. Like, you know, Conor was like, explain this. Explain this. And Khabib's like, okay. All right, well, check it out. Well, sit down and shut the fuck up so I can explain it. Like, basically. And, um... It was, it was almost like Khabib shut down, not shut down, but I don't think he was affected whatsoever by Connor's shit talk. Like, he just let Connor talk. And Khabib was just sitting there going like, oh, okay, well, it's a clown. Let the circus go. It's not a big deal. Whatever. And uh, that's where we, were ended, we ended up then. I think the best part of the whole presser, though, was at the end when Connor's talking shit about Ali Abdelaziz, and he's calling him a terrorist, and... He's like, how's Noah? Which is basically, we, we, uh, Noah is, is one of uh, Ali's kids who he doesn't pay child support for. Like at all. And uh, if you need any information on this, go to at Mike Russell on MMA. On, I think it's Mike Russell. Or, it's either at Mike Russell or Mike Russell on MMA on Twitter. That dude has the most extensive research like anyone's done on Ali and all this dirty, dark shit from his past like you, need, you guys need to go check that out like I think he, I think Mike was the biggest winner of the entire fucking press conference I don't think anybody else did anything nobody made a dent nothing except for Mike Russell at the very end thanks to Conor McGregor so uh, big ups on that overall I mean it left me kind of flat like I didn't I wasn't impressed I wasn't any more hyped I was like oh sh-. I wasn't like you know most Conor like, even the, the ones against you know, the ones with the fights against Nate even those let me like, oh shit, it's gonna be, it's gonna be crazy, it's gonna be fun. Yeah, you know I mean, this one did nothing for me, like nothing. You know, of course the Connor fanboys are gonna be like, oh, it was fucking great, man. It was fucking great. Hell yeah. He fucking told Khabib. He showed Khabib. And he, Khabib didn't react to any of his shit. In order for Connor to win, he, your, your the opponent has to react to some of that shit. And there was no reaction. It was almost like when Nate did it. Nate was just like, fuck you. How about that? That kind of thing. Right? Before that, RDA was trying to talk shit. He got owned. Eddie Alvarez was trying to talk shit. He got owned. Dustin Poirier sort of tried to talk shit. He got owned. Like, if you don't react to the clown, the clown has no power. So it works out that way, right? But, like, I enjoy kind of shit talk when there's a crowd there. That's fun for me. Like, I enjoy seeing the, the crowd reaction and hearing it. And everyone, you know, gaining up on the other guy. But uh, Connor, you know, he just didn't have it. And then on top of that, Khabib's just a cold-blooded motherfucker. That dude doesn't give a fuck. That guy hangs out with dictators and shit. You out of your mind. So, I mean, overall, I didn't do much. I mean, it hyped up the fight for a lot of people, I guess. Like, the ones that are big-time Connor fans. But as far as, like, just a regular MMA fan, I mean, me personally, I'm just, I was like, okay, that, that happened. That's cool. Like he, you know, he he was acting. He was all cracked out, which I don't know if he was or not. But he was acting all cracked out, freaking out, and screaming and yelling, and and like he was like fighting, trying so hard to get Khabib to react to something, and Khabib wouldn't react. And it's almost like it pissed him off and made him angry, which I do understand because in order to get a good promotion out of a shit talk press conference, you need some reaction. So in essence, Khabib didn't hold up his end. You know what I mean? 
Khabib didn't do his end. Like, when we talk about Mayweather doing promotion and why he goes all out, it's because people try not to react to his shit. So he has to do, like, double the work. Against McGregor, uh, you know, Mayweather didn't have to do as much work, as much promo, as much shit talk, and all that stuff. So, that was great for Mayweather, right? McGregor enjoys it when, there's, when he gets some reaction because he doesn't have to work as hard. But he was going balls out yesterday, trying his best to get Khabib to react and give him something to work with. And nothing. There was nothing. Nothing. Doesn't even matter how the fight goes right now. It's just, right, it, it, there was nothing to react. There, no kind of reaction, nothing that Connor can, can jump on and, and come back with. So, it was, to me, it ended up being a little flat. Still entertaining, mind you. Don't, don't get it twisted. It was still entertaining to watch McGregor, you know, act a fool or whatever. But... It just, it was flat without the crowd and without any reaction from Khabib. There was, uh, you know, it was kind of just flat for me. So, a lot of people liked it, and, and it, as they should. Like I said, it wasn't just, you know, mostly entertaining. Um, it just wasn't what we, ex- to, what I expected, I guess. It wasn't what I expected, especially after all the hype. Like, oh shit, UFC 220 at press conference, Khabib and Connor facing each other for the first time. That's going to be fucking crazy. And I'm just like, ah, yeah, I bet. All right, well, I mean, let's, uh, it should be crazy. It should be fun. And then when they announced there was going to be no crowd, that's immediately when I started going like, ooh, that's not good. If there's no crowd, there's no reaction to Connor's, like no mass fun reaction to Connor's shit. So, you know, and the media's not going to do it. I just kind of wish they had cameras outside because they were doing it. They were, they were having like a watch party somewhere nearby. And I wish they had cameras out there because that would have been more fun to watch. I guarantee though, those fuckers like were reacting like crazy. That would have been great. But to not have the fans and then, you know, Khabib just beat Khabib. It was kind of, it to me, it was kind of flat. It was just one man, you know, trying his hardest to, to, to do something. And then uh, he get, him getting frustrated and spending you know, a lot of his time talking about his whiskey. But, but hey, he got me to want to try it. I do legit want to try it. If I find a bottle, I'm going to. But other than that, it was uh, it was flat, so. I'm um, just wondering what you guys are thinking. Let me know in the comments or hit me up on Twitter at elaw 31 Let me know what you guys thought of the press conference. I'm sure I'll get a lot of a lot of you being a hater, bro. Connor fucking Connor was kind of kind of whooped him. Connor, Connor did it right, bro. He's in his head. No, no, the fuck, he's not. You're not getting Khabib's head. Like you're not getting in Khabib's head. It's not possible. That dude does not give a fuck what shit you talk to him. Whether or not he's gonna win the fight. Right now, like I said, it's irrelevant because the fight's not happening until October 6th. But, but uh, as far as the press conference, there wasn't very much. So we'll have to wait and see how uh, what kind of barbs are sent on social media and, and interviews and shit that maybe we'll get some, some fun out of. All right, the other thing to talk about is uh, John Bond Jones. So John Jones gets the good old wrist wrist slap from uh, Usada, who had been boasting about, oh, we can give him four years, we can give him two years suspension, four years suspension, whatever the fuck, and then give him 15 months, time already served, he's available in October, it's just like or November or something like that. Um, what the fuck are we doing? Like, what are we doing, for real? Like... What's the point of Usada if there's not being any real punishment? I mean, it, this sounds, this stinks a lot of Uncle Dana going, come on guys, help me out here. And then Usada complying with that. You know what I mean? Like everyone's just like, well, you know, they, they said he, he didn't, you know, intentionally cheat. How do you not intentionally cheat? You know, taint the supplement? No, dude, cheating's cheating, dog. Like, ignorance of the rules is not an excuse. This is not. What the fuck? You know what I mean, yeah, other athletes have to serve fucking a year or two of suspension because, you know, their shit was tainted. But this motherfucker gets, you know, for the second failed test, gets a hand on, a slap on the wrist. Like, dude, what the fuck? That being said, anyway, people saying that I hate, I'm hating on John Jones, eat a fat dick. I don't hate John Jones. He annoys me, like, with all this bullshit because then, you know, he does stupid, dumbass shit. And then we don't get to see him fight for a fucking year or two. You know what I mean? It's stupid. It really is dumb as hell. And that's why that's why he annoys me. But I don't hate the guy. I mean, whatever. I don't give a fuck. So, 
So he's back, and everyone's wondering if he's gonna fight Gus or if he's gonna fight DC at 2:30 at UFC 2:30 and shit. And Dana White's like, no, hell no, for sure he's not gonna happen. By the way, well, I'll say in a second, but there's there are everyone's wondering if he's gonna fight, you know, Gus or DC. Yeah, at the at the two, uh, UFC 2:30 in Madison Square Garden, that one that has uh, Nate and Poirier, Nate Diaz and Dustin Poirier as the uh, as the co-main. They're wondering if that's gonna happen, so. Uh, who knows? I would that'd be the move, right? But I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to like reward John Jones or give him a title shot on the way back. I mean, I would. Money would though. Like Dana White would be like, uh, yeah, we're gonna do that because that's gonna pay money, like a lot of money. People are gonna watch, tune in and watch that shit. Uh, whether or not Daniel Cormier will actually do that fight, Dana White would have to pay him more to fight John Jones than he was gonna pay him to fight Brock Lesnar. Okay, because DC's got the Lesnar fight. That's there. Okay. But you would have to pay DC more than you would have to pay uh, to fight Jones. You have to pay him more to fight Jones than you have to pay him to fight Brock Lesnar. Because that Brock Lesnar fight is there, and that Brock Lesnar fight is going to get him paid. Okay. Like, DC's going to be set for life after this fight with Brock Lesnar. So, do I see it happening? No. Um, I think, like, like everyone's saying, more than likely, we if we get Jones in, you know, before 2019, it's got to be Gustafson. And, uh, you know, who knows what his situation is like right now. I'm sure he'd be down for that fight, especially if he gets him a title shot. But, um, especially, like, here's my move, right? If I'm Dana White, I call Gus, I call Jones, like, all right, guys, let's, let's do the rematch for the interim belt. And then winner gets DC or whoever is, you know, light heavyweight champion by the time we get there. Or if DC retires, you know, winner gets, you know, to fight for the belt, for the actual belt. So, it's, uh, I think that'd be the move. I hate interim belts, but I don't see, that's the only way I see it happening. I mean, people aren't going to buy a pay-per-view where John Jones isn't fighting for a belt. For real. So, I mean, not that he's not fighting, yeah, but he's not fighting for, for a belt of some kind. So, it's going to be, you guys know what will happen. Um, whether or not they're gonna wait to 2019, I don't think so. But you never know. Alright, other than that, I got nothing left. I got nothing else. It's been a long ass week, a lot of fucking bullshit. <laughs> like it's been a stressful long ass week, so. Um Yeah, I'm gonna disappear for a couple days here. Um, no sh- I mean we never do shows in the weekend really. So but I'm not doing shit. And uh, I might be on Twitter a little bit, but not very much. And so we will see, uh, yeah, we'll talk to you guys next week. Um, fuck it, I'll probably be on Twitter, who knows. I, I, I never sit there and go, well, let's tweet this, and let's tweet that. I just, you know, tweet if I feel like tweeting something. So, all right, guys, y'all have a good weekend. Appreciate you guys uh, hanging out this week. Um, enjoy yourselves. UFC Sao Paulo tomorrow. They're weighing in now. I didn't, haven't seen any results yet, so who knows if anyone missed or made weight or whatever. But um, I'm sure everyone will, or most people will. But, uh, yeah, UFC Sao Paulo tomorrow. Looking forward to, yeah, honestly, looking forward to Lil Nog against Sam Alvey. Hoping, hopefully, hoping, you know, Lil Nog goes out in a, in a blaze of glory, but who knows. Y'all have a good weekend. Catch you guys later. Peace.